And let me bring in now my panel. Leanne Caldwell, co-author of the Early 202 at the Washington Post. Simone Sanders Townsend, former senior advisor to Vice President Harris and host of Simone on MSNBC. And Brendan Buck, former press secretary to Speaker John Boehner and an NBC News political analyst. Thank you all so much for joining us. Now, Simone, of course, you were a senior advisor to the Biden-Harris 2020 campaign. What do you make of these poll numbers? Uh, they, they don't look good, but mm -hmm. it's a year out, and mm -hmm. uh, there is still time to turn it around. Uh, polling in 2019 before mm -hmm. the 2020 election also did not look great for Joe Biden, but he turned it around. So uh, I, I do think that they should pay attention because the support has been soft with some key constituencies, mm -hmm. um, young people, black voters, particularly black and Latino men, for example. And that is something that I spoke to Quentin Folks, the deputy campaign manager, about on my show yesterday. And uh, they are taking it seriously, but they said they're not concerned about these polls. Mm -hmm. right, well, Brendan, 71 percent of registered voters in these swing states say that President Biden is too old. So is that ultimately what some of this might boil down to? It, it certainly feels like it. And it's not just Republicans who say he's too old. It's independents and even some Democrats who feel like he's too old. And I understand the argument that he's only a few years older mm -hmm. than Donald Trump, but he has aged more than Donald Trump. And I think we need to acknowledge that. And I think a lot of voters are, are saying that. I mean, if you're Democrats, you shouldn't be surprised by this polling. I mean, Joe Biden has been, been slipping and have been soft for a very long time. That's why this doesn't just feel like some outlier poll that you can get rid of. It's been trending in this direction for a long time. As you said, we're a year out, but usually at this point, someone would tell you, well, we have an opponent and we're going to define that person and we're going to change the debate. People know who Donald Trump is at this point, and they're still choosing him over Joe Biden in ways that you would not expect. So very concerning poll if, if you're the Biden administration. There is some difference, Leanne, though, if some of these voters, according to the poll, if Donald Trump were to be convicted, mm -hmm. then, then Biden would fare better. How much of the difference do you think that makes over the next year or so if Donald Trump, we just you know, saw him testifying today in a civil trial, but he's still got all these criminal trials uh, going up. What do you think are going on? What do you think happens if he is convicted? And how does that affect the state of play of things. It's really the question of the entire campaign. Assuming he's going to win the Republican nomination and he's going to be up against President Biden. Now, you say that people are want to define their opponent. People know who Donald Trump is. But Donald Trump, for the most part, yes, he's in the news with these criminal trials, but he's not, Democrats will say, not front and center in people's minds. He's not on social media every day, not getting access. He's not central to the news cycle on a uh, every minute-by-minute -minute basis. And so Democrats are betting that people will be reminded of who Donald Trump is once there is actually a campaign between the two. But Donald Trump's criminal convictions or upcoming criminal convictions, we'll see what happens, um, is going to be absolutely uh, a determining factor in this campaign one way or another. And Leanne, when Democrats look at these polls, is President Biden still the best candidate to take on former President Trump? That's not what the polls say. Mm. Uh, generic Democrat. Ge well, you have Dean Phillips, an <laughs> unknown congressman <laughs> from Minnesota. <laughs> Unknown is a big word, but no one else was willing to jump in. And that is the thing. People are looking, Democrats are looking to 2028. Mm -hmm. They are skipping 2024. They don't want to upset the Democratic establishment. And so that's who Democrats have as the president. And Brendan, when Republicans look at these polls, does this signal Trump's strength or Biden's weakness? Well, I think certainly more about Joe Biden, if, if I'm looking at this. I mean, the, the, the economy, more than anything, is, is going to be hanging around his neck. Um, the, the White House likes to tout Bidenomics, and I, you know, I think that was always a risky play. Um, the the in, Inflation is not a thing that just goes away and everybody feels better, and they don't seem to grasp that. Even if inflation has slowed down, it's not like prices have reverted back to, to what they were before. And there's really no solution for that at this point. It's probably going to be painful for a long time. Right. And I, I want to read something that David Axelrod tweeted over the weekend that has oh, seemed to yeah. have gotten a lot of attention. Simone, I want to get your take on it. <laughs> Only Joe Biden can make this decision. If he continues to run, he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party. What he needs to decide is whether that is wise, whether it is in his best interest or the country's. Now, I was speaking with one person familiar with the Biden team's thinking on this. This person said, well, look, it's no real surprise. David Axelrod has consistently been a detractor of the Biden administration. What would you say? What I would, would also say? argue, and I, I love Ax, but he was also a detractor of the 2020 Biden campaign. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised by this, but it's very disingenuous. Democrats, especially Democratic strategists, know. Republican strategists, anyone who is a professional politico, hell, the reporters know. 
Joe Biden is the president of the United States of America. Therefore, the head of the party that he is the, on the ticket of, he is a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And if the president of the United States of America can, is eligible to, to run for re-election and decides to do so, that's your nominee, baby. That's how it works. I'm, I know that they might, that might not sound democratic, but that is the game. That's how it works. And so David Axelrod's comments are kind of crazy because Joe Biden did make his decision. He has started a re-election campaign. But, but was it the right decision? That's the question. Well, he made it, though. So, like, what, what we <laughs> want, like, Joe Biden has been trying to be president since before I was born, okay? He literally, he's ran for pre been running for president since 1988. The idea that he would get the presidency, beat Donald Trump, vaccinate America, finally have infrastructure week, make the largest investment in infrastructure since, like, the people that invented the interstate, and he's not not going to run for re-election? I mean, I think the reason he right. can't run for re-election is it would be so painful for the Democratic Party to sort this out right. that quickly. And the people, that, the, the choices that they have are not Sounds necessarily like going to make it easy for them to win. Okay. So moving to 2024, uh, <laughs> Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds is expected to endorse Florida Governor Ron DeSantis tonight during a campaign rally. And just moments ago, Dasha Burns spoke to her and DeSantis in an exclusive interview. I want to play a part of what they both had to say. We have a lot of great candidates that are running for office. I, I consider them friends. I've had the opportunity to campaign with them. I appreciate all of them stepping forward and putting their lives and their livelihoods on, on the line to have the opportunity to represent this country. But I have to take a look at everybody. As somebody who's a leader, you should want people who are delivering big victories for their constituents, standing up for conservative values, which Kim has done. And it's almost like with, with Donald Trump, if you don't kiss the ring, you could be the best governor ever and he'll trash you. You could be a terrible, corrupt politician, but if you kiss his ring, then all of a sudden he'll praise you. Leanne, what do you make of those comments? Is this going to help him? I mean, congrats. He got the Iowa governor's endorsement. He's still 30 it's, behind, right. 30 points behind and, Donald and it's Trump. it's not really a surprise. For the last couple of right. months, you know, and what is it, several months ago that uh, Donald Trump started lashing out against Kim Reynolds because he thought this might be in the cards. But really, will this make any sort of dent? No. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the evangelicals in Iowa have also publicly, the evangelical leaders in Iowa, I should say, have also publicly um, admonished Donald Trump, moved away from him and backed Ron DeSantis. And that is why Ron DeSantis is focusing a lot on Iowa. He thought he had an opening there. But if the polling is accurate, he still, there's, mm -hmm. like I said, 30 points behind. All right. So I also want to get to something before we leave here. The other problem the president's been facing is the divide within his own party over the, the response to the Israel-Hamas war. Even President Obama weighed in over the weekend. Let's take a listen. It will require an admission of complexity and maintaining what on the surface may seem contradictory ideas. That, that what Hamas did was horrific and there's no justification for it. And what is also true is that the, the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is, is unbearable. And so if you want to solve the problem, then you have to take in the whole truth. And you then have to admit nobody's hands are clean. Former President Obama weighing in on this. Well, look, I think um, he is saying, frankly, what Obama has felt for a very long time. Even when he was president, he and Prime Minister Netanyahu had a notoriously frosty right. relationship because these are views that he has held for a long time. Look, I think that there is a there has recently been a generational divide within the Democratic Party apparatus and how older Democrats and younger Democrats and more progressive Democrats view the issue of um, Israel and Palestine. And you put on top of that, now there is a not just a generational divide, but a divide between folks that are seeing what is happening to Palestinian civilians that are not Hamas and the just the the rain of fire, if you will, yeah. of bombs that are being dropped on them by the Israeli government. And they see President Biden, who has... Right. 
literally embraced Prime Minister Netanyahu publicly, privately, they have pushed back. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to see Joe Biden, I think, push back forcefully on Prime Minister Netanyahu in public. And I think that is going to be a problem for them. It's not going to lose right. him the election, I don't think. Something else might, but it's going to be an issue. All right. Simone, Brendan, and Leanne, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.